everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and this is episode 48 in the podcast series. Uh, I'm coming to you from Urbana, Illinois, where it is a rainy Monday, and it is actually New Year's Eve today. Uh, and I have been away from podcasting for three weeks rather than two. Oh my god, what have you guys done without me? What have I done without you? <laughs> Uh, it's been Christmas time, my son was home, and as so many of you know, you only have a 14 year old once, and so he was off of school the last week, and I just decided to like hang out with him, and just hang out, like cooking, we made gingerbread houses, we put up the Christmas tree, we just did all the Christmassy festivity kind of stuff, and I knit a little bit, um, but mostly we just hung out, and that just seems so important. So, thank you for forgiving my extra week absence, and uh, it's really nice to be back. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, welcome. This is a podcast about knitting and modifications and garments for the most part, um, but it's also I do a little spinning here and there, and. Uh, I'm really into DIY and trying to like figure out your own way around things. So if you like those things, you're in the right place. And of course, welcome back to everyone else. It's so nice to see you again. Um, I am, like I said, in Urbana. I'm a professor at the university there, and that's my day job. But pretty much every other hour of the day uh, is filled with either puppies or knitting. We have two one-year-old dogs, and uh, they have been a little bit uh, cooped up because of the rain. So <laughs> it's been a kind of crazy... Uh, a couple of days. So <laughs> I found a couple minutes where it seems like it'll be quiet and maybe they'll be occupied and I can come up here and talk to you all about some knitting stuff. Um, sometimes you guys ask me what I'm wearing. Um, I am wearing uh, the Scale Gra by LB Handknits, Albina McLaughlin, who I've talked about on here quite a bit. Uh, it's a beautiful top-down um, yoked pullover with this lace detail here and then three-quarter length sleeves which also have the lace detail and it's just a really beautiful, fun, good fitting, wonderful sweater. Um, it's in green, I did mine in Green Mountain Spinnery in uh, the Lana Art Yarn that I picked up at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival last, not this past year, but the last year. And I love their stuff. I have another sweater's quantity of this yarn, which for me is like about three, I think it's three or four skeins um, in the stash over here. So I'm hoping to be able to make another sweater this year out of it. Um, I just love the way that it kind of uh, knits up and sits in the fabric is really lovely. Um, and let's see, to my, speaking of stash, over here, you can barely see it in the frame, but, um, over Christmas, Spencer's present to me was that he made a big old shelf for all of my yarn bins, <laughs> so I can actually pull them all out and access them, and I'm so thankful because it was kind of like they were stacked on top of each other, and to get one in the middle or on the bottom was really difficult, so I have a shelf now where everything fits, and all the bins have their own place, and it's just super great. So thank you, Spencer, especially if you're watching. <laughs> I appreciate what you did with the shelving over here. Um, let's see, what other businessy stuff? Uh, you can find me. Where you can find me? You can find me just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash on uh, Instagram and Ravelry, obviously on YouTube, and on the blog, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com. Now we are coming to the end of another year, and I'm not one for New Year's resolutions, but I do post a to-learn list every year, and this year is going to be no exception. So over on the blog, I'm going to post my to-learn list, and I'll give an update on what happened the last year and whether or not I fulfilled my to-learn list. <laughs> and I do this because knitting for me is like a big learning experience. It's all about being a beginner again, or you know, becoming more and more advanced, and uh, the to-learn list kind of inspires me to do the things that I've been wanting to do and it kind of is a good reminder of the techniques and skills that I really want to learn in the new year. So I always put up a to learn list. I'd love to know what your to learn lists are. Um, if you want to share them over on the blog or here below on um, YouTube comments or if you want to send me a link to your blog, I'd love to know what you're planning on learning and doing in the new year. Um, a couple of updates, I guess. I mean, on that score for the podcast is that in the new year, uh, I plan to have more on uh, modifications. So I want to have a year of kind of modifications and de design. Um, I've been picking up lots and lots of old, kind of somewhat out of print, sometimes not out of print, um, sweater design workshop books, and I'm planning on going through them this year, and I'm hoping to share a lot of those techniques with you, like design techniques, modification techniques. Maybe we'll um, start up a cowl or something where everybody modifies a pattern, and 
we talk about what kind of modifications we're doing and why and what we think we're going to get. Um, so expect all that kind of stuff in the new year. It should be kind of fun. Um, I'm also planning on doing some more book reviews on here so that um, the library I've been acquiring, I can share it with you guys so that um, we can talk a little bit more about the knitting books out there in the world. And I'm particularly interested in the fact that knitting books seem to be, and spinning books, seem to be, um, there was a point at which there were a lot of local, there was a lot of local knowledge involved. So my guild members have, um, a few of them passed away recently and there have been a few kind of stash sales and they've been selling their books for our education fund and things like that. And I'm, obviously I'm a professor, I love books. So I pick up a lot of books at these sales. And uh, a lot of these books are, are old, they're out of print, they're um, books that you can't get at the library and you can't pick up so easily online. And so I'm hoping on the podcast in the new year to talk a little bit more about these books and the lo kind of local knowledge that um, knitting and spinning often is. And maybe we can come up with a solution so that some of that older knowledge that seems to be like housed in these books that are really hard to find um, could be shared among us somehow. So those are those are some things I'm looking forward to in the new year. And again, I'd love to know what you guys are looking forward to, what you want to learn, what you want to do, what you want to make. Um, so please share below uh, or over on the blog. And uh, it would be fun to start up a little conversation. I'll set up a Ravelry thread for us too, so that if you want to talk to each other about it, there's a space for you. Um, yeah, okay, so what's on the episode today? Well, <laughs> today's episode I'm calling like Sweater Snafu. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a minute, but I want you guys to know basically that like even someone who knits a lot of sweaters, a lot of garments, uh, can still have snafus, so we'll talk about that. Uh, I've got an FO, which is Brittany's buttoned cowl, uh, and that will take you back in time because it was a graduation gift a couple weeks ago to one of my PhD students who was going through a hooding ceremony and I wanted her to have a little gift. Um, I've got a beastie for you from Helen of Crawcraft Beasties, and I've got a remake along winner of the yarn package. And actually, there were three people who remade sweaters this year, and they're all going to get prizes. So I'm just very proud of all of you and everyone else who participated in the remake along. Thank you for all the encouragement, all the fun, all the pictures, all the thoughts about sweaters. It was really, really great. Uh, and then... One whip for you. I've got the Northeasterly blanket that I'll show you a little bit about. Um, so maybe we'll jump right in with FOs and I'm going to send you to the past to Brittany's button cowl and then I'll bring you back and we'll talk about Spencer's Beastie. <laughs> Welcome to the Brittany's buttoned cowl segment. <laughs> I should say welcome to the past. <laughs> uh, this, what I'm wearing, is Brittany's buttoned cowl, which is a pattern by Kefren Pritchett. And you are very likely to know Kefren Pritchett because um, even if you don't know her from my blog and podcast, um, I knit her sand shawl a while back. She's been featured on the blog a bunch of different times. Um, but you probably know her because you've seen her patterns in Knit Picks, uh, in Interweave Magazine, uh, in Piecework, all over the place. She's she has has patterns published and she also has an indie Ravelry store so you can go check out her independent patterns that way. She does brilliant work, great work with texture and structure and I just really admire her as a designer. Um, so this is Brittany's button cowl and I'm showing you the button side. This is also another way you could wear it which is just let it hang on your neck, let the buttons go off to the side or to the back. Um, and I knit this in Yarn Fairy and the Pixies Elf Merino which was from a Knit Crate box, actually. And this is 100% non-superwash merino, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's cool to find some non-superwash merino. Uh, 288 yards for 100 grams, dial-up brush steel, and I actually got two of these in the same box from Knit Crate. They were slightly different, as most indie dyers are, indie yarns are. So they were both brushed steel, um, but they both have a slightly different uh, I'd say a, like a background color to them. So this one has a little bit more of like a pinky blue kind of background. And this one on the skein had a little bit more of like a purple blue kind of background uh, or like undertone or something like that. But you can see they're pretty, pretty similar. So had I knit something at, with both skeins, if I had um, traded off, you know, uh, each row with the different um, skein, it would have been just fine. Um, so that's Yarn Fairy and the Pixies Elf Merino, which is beautiful, and it is so soft. Um, I've just washed this once um, in some like lukewarm water and uh, some soak or euclid, something like that, and just let it rest, and everything bloomed really beautifully. So let me show you the cowl off my neck <laughs> so that you can actually see it. Um, so here's what the cowl looks like, all buttoned up. 
And Spencer, luckily for me, is good at sewing, and so he's good at sewing on buttons. So he sewed these buttons on. And these buttons I just had in my stash. They're really, um, they're a nice complement to this yarn, I think, because they have that kind of, I don't know, not a brushed, they do have a kind of brushed steel effect to them. So they, they play with this yarn really nicely, I think. Um, and in the pattern, Kefren has it set up just for three buttons, as you can see. Um, but you could very easily, if you wanted to make sure that it was gonna sit very closed and very straight on your neck, you could add more buttons to it if you wanted to. You could put an extra one here and here, um, and it would be fine. In her pattern, she also talks about, she uses some antler buttons. And if you, one of the uh, like options with this is that you could button it just about anywhere. You know, you could uh, put the button through one of these other holes over here, which you can easily do. So you can kind of like move your buttons around the cowl a little bit as you go, because these, this lace part actually opens up really nicely. Um, and you could button in button into it if you wanted to, especially if you had something like antler buttons, um, this kind of long skinny prong looking buttons. Um, I just opted for the classic kind of like round button look. So that's what I, I, I just like the way that kind of came out. Uh, let me actually unbutton it and show you a little bit more about it as it goes here. And I talked on the last podcast about modifying it in one way or another, but um, because Kefren's version is longer, so it kind of folds over and sits really nicely, so it would kind of sit under your coat. Um, but I have a graduation to go to tomorrow. One of my awesome grad students, who's no longer a grad student because she defended her dissertation, um, is getting hooded tomorrow. I get to hood her, so she gets to have her full doctoral graduation ceremony. And I wanted to have a present for her, and I realized this was on the needles, and it's kind of perfect. Um, she is. She and I have talked a lot about crafting, and um, she and her husband make beautiful handmade soaps and lotions, and she's gifted Spencer and I some of their beautiful work, so I thought it's only appropriate that I gift her back something um, that I've knit. So I finished it up a little bit shorter than I thought I would, um, but it's kind of the perfect length. And the way that I um, figured out the length is that I took one of the... I have this fleece cowl that I used to wear running. I kind of laid it out and measured it. And I think I got about 10 and a half or 11 inches, um, you know, from side to side. And so I knitted this, knit this until it was about 10 and a half or 11 inches across, um, minus the extra button band. And then I knew it would open up a little bit more once I washed and blocked it. So, and it did just a little bit. Um, so that ended up being a kind of perfect size, I think, for the neck. And the height of this is just perfect. So Kefren already worked out that part. Um, so this is what it looks like. This You start on this end with the button band and you knit this way <laughs> with lots of cable and texture until you get to the buttonhole band down at the bottom. Uh, and if you're interested in having your buttonhole bands look this cool and finished, see that? Uh-huh. You might want to check out this pattern because Kefren has some great ideas about how to finish these buttonhole bands um, to give this kind of reinforced but really beautifully finished look. So check out the pattern for that. I'm not going to give away her secrets here. Um, but I really like this kelp and this yarn. I mean, you can just see it is a really beautiful kind of drapey, soft, like per cow perfect for cowls, cowl perfect. Because when this sits on your neck, as you saw, it kind of like accordions in on itself. And so it produces the perfect cowl characteristics, <laughs> I would say. Um, so I will be gifting this to Bryn tomorrow at her graduation ceremony, and it's kind of actually the perfect time of year too because it is winter here and everybody needs a good cowl. And then I think I better get quickly knitting on another one because I have this extra skein of the Yarn Fairy uh, and the Pixies yarn, and I love the way that this worked out, and I think I want one for myself. When I put it on, I thought, oh, this is actually really, really nice. <laughs> So I will be wrapping this up and writing a little card and sending it off to Bryn tomorrow. Yeah. And now I'll send you back to the future. See ya. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that buttoned cowl. It is a really beautiful object. And Bryn, um, my grad student, loved it. She was so excited to have it. And she just kind of like squished it and said, oh my God, did you knit this? It's beautiful. And she, um, she made me some soap and everything. I think I told you in the last segment. And so it was like a nice equal maker exchange. Um, really, really sweet. Uh, okay. 
So, the other finished object <laughs> is not mine. It's actually Spencer's, and it's actually um, Helen of Crawcraft Beasties. And if you haven't heard of Crawcraft Beasties, you have to go check them out, check her out. Um, Helen it has been making little creatures for a very long time. She has a new calendar out for 2019 that you can download. Uh, she takes these beasties with her on her travels, and they, they all have fun, and they're really great little personalities, and you should just go check them out. I'll put the website here and in the show notes so that you can go see. But I asked her, after knowing her for about, oh, I don't know how long we've known each other, a year or two at this point? She's in Ireland, um, and we've talked back and forth, and I finally said, okay, I need to get a beastie for Spencer. So this is it. Spencer as a beastie. <laughs> it couldn't really be any cuter. So he's a little knitted creature, and he's got a knapsack on the back, and all the little elements of Spencer. Uh, the cool thing about Helen um, and Crawcraft Beasties is that while she has her own um, brood of beasties who travel around with her, she also takes commissions to make new uh, little beastie people. Uh, and you can ask her like for basically anything you want. It's kind of she's like kind of amazing. So she made tools for Spencer Beastie. This is a hammer, and everything is can be connected to his little hands because she put magnets in there. Look at that. Like, you can hold his hammer, it's so great. Uh, she made a hat for him, which is actually his hat. Like, he wears this hat all the time. If you ever watch the Matter Spencer videos, you know that he wears, like, a hat just like this all the time. She even made little, like, safety glasses for him. Like, he has glasses that are kind of clear that he uses as safety glasses, and she made those. He has uh, a little handkerchief in the back. He has uh, a knapsack that has, like, a torch, a little flashlight that he can also hold and he has a pocket knife in here somewhere. <laughs> These are all little things I said to her while Spencer really loves his pocket knife, his flashlight, and his hammer. So, so it's a little um, pocket knife that opens and closes. And it's like made out of, um, I think these are all made out of felt. They're really just beautiful. Um, I don't know how she does it, but she does it, and it's really gorgeous. So here's Spencer Beastie, and I just have to send a huge shout out to Helen uh, to say thank you for this. It arrived just in time for Christmas, and uh, Spencer was so happy. Even my son, Zach, was like, wow, that little Beastie guy is really cool. I think we might need another one. We might need a little Zach character. Um, it's so nice to have them, like, hanging around the house. So I think this, this little guy is going to go on some prison bus adventures with Spencer, and uh, it should be kind of fun to see what happens with him. So that's the other finished object. It's not mine, it's Helen's um, and Spencer's, but it's so cute. I <laughs> just love it, it's so cute. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, you know what? It might be time for Sweater Snafu. <laughs> let's, just, let's just do it, let's just talk about Sweater Snafu. So you guys know, over the last years, I mean, I just started making garments, and I think last year alone I knit something like nine sweaters, in addition to some other, sorry, there's crinkly stuff. Um, I knit like nine sweaters in addition to, you know, other knitty stuff, and this was one of the ones that I knit. And for the most part, they have fit really wonderfully, and I've been kind of fortunate with the modifications I've done, and like reading the patterns, and working with designers. Um, and working with people who needed sample knits to knit things that actually fit and work and are useful and practical and all those good things. Um, but every once in a while you have a sweater snafu and no matter how many garments you've knit, something can go wrong. And when it does, you just have to kind of bounce back and figure out what to do. So one of them is this sweater, which um, we talked about in a, a couple episodes ago. And you all offered excellent advice to me. like. Uh, the reason this is a little bit of a snafu is because the, the original pattern calls for you to pick up stitches along this edge and knit horizontally across and create a kind of like lacy, cowly, drapey thing up at the top. But the thing is, as I said when we were talking about the sweater, no one wears their sweater, like, and it doesn't quite look good on anyone. It just, it's like, it doesn't quite sit right, it doesn't seem practical. Everyone who's posing in the pictures has kind of, like, got one of those weird poses, and you're like, eh, it's not really a practical sweater. Um, and I just know for me, I'm not gonna wear it. So I wanted to do something else, but it's taken me a month. I let this sweater sit in a bag for a month. Can you believe that? I let a sweater sit in a bag for a month. It's like so unusual. Because I was just trying to figure out what to do. And you guys offered really great advice, and I so appreciate all the advice. And if you're looking for advice on sweater modification, go back and read the comments on that um, blog post, because they or that episode, because they were just all over the all over the map in terms of how to do it and what to do, and they were just great. So what I decided to do is um, 
I laid down the sweater and kind of looked at it. And the deal is, it's not a flat line. Like it's not a straight line over here. So if you pick up all your stitches, you would need to do what she did. Carol, this is a Carol Feller pattern. This is um, Dark Pearl. Uh, you would need to do what she did, which is add increases up here because this is basically a raglan. And then this side of the sweater, as you can see, I tried to pin it so you could see it, just sits in a straight line. So this, that's not straight though. See, this is like, this is a straight line and then this is not a straight line. So what I decided to do, thanks to all of your advice, is I'm gonna knit a panel as if this were a seamed sweater knit in the flat. I'm gonna knit a panel from here to here, I'm trying to like show you in the camera, um, flat, vertically, and I'm gonna create first uh, this kind of like triangle at the top down to a rectangle portion over here so that it kind of makes up for that difference. And then I'm gonna have the lace panel kind of sit exactly in the center. Now, what I haven't decided is whether or not it will be buttoned or whether or not it will be totally seamed and just set in so that it's a, it ends up being a pullover. Um, <laughs> I tried to draw it out for Spencer and he turned my sweater drawing into a drawing about me, which I thought was just so cute, so I thought I'd show you guys. So <laughs> this is the sweater and you can see I'm talking about adding this panel here so that it's just a stocking up panel like this panel over here, which you can see on the sweater, right? Uh, and then creating a kind of lace uh, center panel here. Uh, so that, that's the plan. This is the sweater drawing that Spencer made for me, which I very much appreciated. Uh, and I've got to decide if, two things, if the lace pattern is going to be the same pattern um, of lace that she uses in her actual pattern, or if it's going to be a different kind of lace pattern. I, I haven't decided that. And like I said, I haven't decided if it's going to be buttoned or if it's just going to be seamed or if it'll be seamed and then add faux buttons, something like that. So we'll see. But I should be able to get to that in the next month or so and show you a finished sweater, even though this thing has been sitting in a bag for a month, which is very sad. The other snafu I had is with a beautiful sweater that I'm sample knitting for someone, like a custom sample knit. And I did my gauge swatch faithfully. Uh, it wasn't right, so I re-gauge swatched. And this sweater is knit partially in the flat. The sleeves are knit in the flat and the body's knit in the round. And my gauge swatch was in the flat. Never had a problem with this before. I've knit, how many sweaters? 17, 18 sweaters, never had a problem. If I do a flat gauge swatch, it usually works out close enough. But for whatever reason, and I think it has to do with the drape of the fabric and the fact that there is a difference between flat and round gauge swatching. Uh, when I got up to the end of the yoke of this sweater, not the one I'm wearing, but the one that's downstairs sitting in a bag, uh, when I got up to the yoke of the sweater, I started running out of yarn. And I knew for the pattern size that it should have been just right. It should have been all right. I should have had enough yarn to make the whole thing. Um, and I ran out of yarn about 20 rows from the top. I thought, it's not right. Something's not right here. So I started investigating. I pulled the sweater out, laid it out. I was working on it, trying to measure different things. You know, I had my flat ruler, my measuring tape, my, you know, just like, what's my gauge here? What's my gauge here? Gauge on the sleeves. Perfect. Spot on because they're, they're knit in the flat. Gauge in the body as I cast on and worked the first few inches. Spot on. No problem. So that's why I kept going, obviously. Um, the problem is that this fabric, once you're working in the round and you're creating more fabric than a four by four swatch, starts to act differently. So by the time I got up to the yoke of this sweater, my gauge was off by one stitch every four inches. Now you might not think that that's a big deal. And it's, it's not that big of a deal, except when you add the drape of the sweater, it is. And when you have the, the problem of only having four skeins of yarn to make this sweater, it is a problem because one stitch every four inches over the course of this entire sweater adds up to one extra inch of fabric along the entire side of the sweater. If you take that extra inch of fabric and put it up around the top, you'd have enough yarn. Snafu. Sweater snafu. So uh, I've been in conversation with the person that I'm making this custom garment for and I think what I'm going to do is keep the sleeves because it's knit in the round up to the armpits. The sleeves are knit flat up to the armpits. Keep the sleeves, just pop them off, frog the whole body, just start over and go down one needle size for the body because it's in the round and that should solve the problem. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna re-knit the whole sweater. 
because you just sometimes things just need to be right and when it comes to sweaters all the time they need to be right <laughs> otherwise you won't wear them they don't fit you don't want to put them on your body because you're constantly like tugging at them and whatever you know you're like oh it doesn't have short rows i need to pull it down whatever it is so i'm gonna do it that's my sweater snafu and i just wanted to share it with you because share both of these with you because i i know sometimes i think when you come to a podcast like this where like every couple weeks i have a finished sweater and i'm you know showing you finished objects and whatnot that you might get the impression that I don't struggle with <laughs> sweater snafus or any kind of knitting snafus, but they they happen. They happen to someone even as experienced as I am with garment knitting. And I know there are plenty more people out there who are more experienced than me who probably could have staved off these these problems. You know, cut off these problems at the pass. You know, instead of letting it get just as far as it did. Um, but I'm gonna fix it, and I'm gonna feel good about that, and it's gonna be awesome. So those are my sweater snafus. Um, and maybe we should move on to a happier topic now, which would be the remake-along for the sweaters for this year. The remake-along for 2018 is over now. It was a success. I knit a sweater that was a remake-along sweater, my Phoenix pullover, and I released a pattern. Oh my god, that was exciting. I want to do that again. Um, and three tons of you got on the Ravelry thread, started throwing out ideas of which sweaters you'd want to remake. This seemed to kind of like hit a nerve with a lot of folks, you know, like you really, it was a cool kind of idea that um, a lot of you got on board with and I so appreciated all the, the fun chatter that was going on over in that thread. Um, three people, three people actually finished sweaters during this remake along in addition to me so four people all together uh so let me show you a couple of these sweaters um the first one is by johan schneider and it is a basket he calls it the basket weave like cardigan and i'm going to try to pull it up here so that you can see it has some really exquisite detail uh some really beautiful cables that he's got going on there I'm gonna try to not linger too long because I've got a few to show you. But he made in the entire sweater. And I will put links to these in the show notes so that you can um, you can go and check them out in, in real life. Uh, let me show you. And the second one is by um, Nest Knitting on Ravelry. And that's Bea, B-E-A, uh, made this sweater. She calls it, she just called it the better sweater. And she looks so happy here. I just want to show you her happy picture. This is Bea wearing her sweater, her remake along sweater. Yay, Bea, way to go. Uh, it's a beautiful, another cabled sweater. So here's a kind of more close up picture of it so you can see all the work that went into that. Beautiful job, well done. And the third one for this remake along project comes to us. From Stephanie of Sagittaria uh, FRBN on <laughs> Ravelry. So this is her Remake Along sweater. And she just called it Remake 2008. Way to go, Stephanie. It's a beautiful, beautiful striped um, kind of marled sweater with a cowl neck. Really beautiful. Way to go. There she is. So Stephanie, Bea, and Johan all made sweaters for this remake along, and I promised prizes, and since there were three of you, there has to be a prize for everybody. Um, Stephanie is the winner of the yarn package, so Stephanie, I'm gonna put a little package of yarn to the mail to you once you send me your address. And for Johan and Bea, I want you guys to pick out patterns on Ravelry, uh, and I will gift them to you uh, for your awesome remake projects. So prizes for everyone. Why not? When you have three people, you've got to, you know, there's, it's got to go around. This is really exciting to me that you guys finish these sweaters. That is no mean feat. So congratulations and congratulations to everyone who got out a sweater and thought about remaking it and did some swatching and played around with the ideas because all of that is just adding to your knitting mojo and to your kind of like inspiration and to your motivation to kind of keep going and doing some cool stuff with your knitting. So Congratulations, good job to everybody on this one. We will, as I said, in the new year, have some modification cows going on with some prizes, and I think that'll be kind of fun. And you guys can jump in on that with any pattern that you are modifying, and we'll do some prizes along the way. All right, uh, let's see. Was there anything left on my list? Hmm. So, 
There actually is one last thing for the podcast that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that is a work in progress, and it is the Northeasterly Blanket uh, by Melissa Alexander Loomis. And a lot of you have heard about this. She released it as a free pattern uh, around Advent time, and the reason for that is because it's made with pretty much all your little mini skeins and scraps. So if you've got an Advent calendar of yarn coming to you, uh, that you're opening every day, then this would be a great project. So she released it as a free pattern. It's now, I think it's about $3 on Ravelry, and it's pretty, pretty fun. So it is a modular pattern, <laughs> so you can take it with you everywhere, use up your scraps, and I've just started a couple of these columns, and the cool thing about these um, columns is that the blanket is made out of um, this kind of biased fabric. Um, so you're doing just basic bias stuff, you know, increases in the middle and decreases on the outside to create this kind of arrow effect. Um, but the cool thing about this blanket is you can use all your scraps and you don't have to measure. Like a lot of those um, blankets out there that are scrappy, you're doing like center double decreases and you're doing those squares and you kind of need to know how much yarn you have to be able to make sure that you're going to be able to finish one. Um, but with this, you just add on the next yarn color and just knit until you run out. And when you run out, you just switch to the next thing. So I started with some socks, sock yarn that I used for Spencer's socks back in the day, switched on to some minis that I had lying around, um, added in some other sock yarn, you know, that kind of thing. And then I started a second column. And this column has some hand spun in it. This one here is my hand spun BFL. Uh, it has some other sock yarn. Um, and this is mostly going to be a fingering weight version. There is a DK weight version out there, um, and you could use all your fingering weight yarn just held double to make it a double knitting weight yarn, a DK weight yarn. Um, so you could do one or the other. Um, but I found that some of my yarns are a little more like DK, and it's not really mattering that much. This red at the bottom is kind of a DK. It's fine. It fits right in. Um, now her pattern calls for you to kind of join these as you go. I started to, but you know what? That makes for a really big, awkward blanket as you get toward the end. So what I'm doing, modification, <laughs> is I'm just gonna knit each of these strips separately. And as she suggests, you can throw things on waist yarn if you're not sure how long, you know, you want the blanket to be or how big you want the blanket to be. And you're not, you know, you wanna start the new column. Just throw it on waist yarn, keep going on your needles and you come back to it, it's no big deal. And then I'm gonna do a mattress stitch to kind of join everything together as uh, as it, you know, the strips get bigger. And once I decide how long the whole thing will be, I kinda wanna keep going with it and make almost like a big bedspread as opposed to a throw blanket. But maybe I'll go with like a five by six kind of size. Uh, but anyway, that is Northeasterly by Melissa Alexander Loomis and fun knit kind of a very affordable pattern and if you have scrappy sock yarn, DK weight yarn lying around, it is totally worth it to, um, you know, pick up this pattern if you're thinking about some blanket, some scrappy blanket knitting. Um, I'm pretty excited about seeing how much it grows and what happens with it. Okay, that's about it. The dogs are going crazy. It's raining still. It's time to just go exercise them, get some lunch, and, uh, say goodbye to you all. I hope you have a happy, happy new year until I see you again. Thanks for hanging out with me and happy knitting. See ya. Mm -hmm.